Hello everyone, Shirley here, and today we're going to take a look at the long-awaited Farrakh on Mythic. Sorry this one is a bit late, but uh, life happens sometimes. So, jumping in on the pull here, we're spec pretty much single target outside of Uproar, and I also have Wrecking Throw, but you don't really need Wrecking Throw if you're trying to get your CE, you know, right at the end. But uh, yeah, we're going to charge in, put up a couple of dots, wait for the boss to get into position, and then I'm going to use my Fearalath on him here because if you pop that channel immediately, I think they patched it to where it doesn't actually hit the boss at like infinite range anymore, so you want to make sure he's stationary for it. And then right after that is when I'm going to use my actual cooldowns and start pumping into the boss here, but I'm going to be saving my uh, potion until uh, intermission phase because we don't really need it for phase one half the time you're holding damage anyway. So, uh, yeah, moving on to the mechanics here, we're moving up to uh, the side here, doing our first Mythic Soak, dodging these uh, fire patches that come out, and uh, moving off the boss here for the first Dream Rends, just running back. We could sit up in melee and just hit him, but like I said, uptime's not usually a big deal. Uh, we're going to jump ahead here just to make sure we don't get hit by any of these orbs coming in, spinning the camera around. And then I get a line here, but luckily I can run across my line to keep up with the boss because the angle was good on it here. Uh, we're going to dodge all these frontals that go out and prepare for the next firestorm. One thing I want to point out in the first phase here is when the frontals go out, <clears throat> if you have it up, you can hit your spell reflect right before they go off in case you don't see one and you happen to get tagged by one because the firestorm cast goes off right afterwards so your spell reflect will still be up and mitigate you know 20 percent of that magic damage uh, even if you do hit it a little bit sooner so you can kind of cover two mechanics with one spell reflect doing it that way we're gonna move off to the side here and as you can see i'm spamming spell reflect in this fight pretty much on cooldown anytime there's a mechanic coming out that's doing fire damage just throw it up help mitigate stuff we are a little bit more stingy with parry for uh, a couple of portions of the fight but sometimes you know you just have to force things too uh our second dream ren goes out here we're gonna go ahead and get back on the boss luckily we didn't have to hold damage for this pull uh sometimes when you do have to hold damage it can be a little tricky for arms because we need the, the cooldown reduction to get our Warb or Colossus Smash back. But uh, anyway, right after those frontals go off before he does his Incarnate cast, we can squeak in our second Fearlath cast there if you did use it on the pull. We're going to use our Gateway here. I see that I'm just on a backup duty for uh, purple orbs right now, so I'm just going to sit behind the boss here and not worry too much about it. I'm keeping my eyes open on the left and right, but... Generally, you know, if you need a backup, something's went really wrong. <laughs> uh, we're going to burn our uh, cooldowns here on the intermission again with our uh, potion this time around. And my trinket that I'm using on this is the, the branch because I just ha don't have anything better still. I'm going to use it immediately to help burn down this shield, uh, remembering to use my wrecking throw during this portion of the fight. And then once we cycle around one more Colossus Smash, I'm going to hold on to the next one because I know he's going to incarnate and fly away again. So we're going to save it for this portion and then open up with it again here. You can throw up your Spell Reflect to help mitigate that drop damage when he falls. Uh, we're going to get behind the boss and pray that we don't get parried on that first cast. And this first line set's pretty safe. Uh, you do have to watch out for the ads, of course, but as long as the boss is drug up to the front of the room there, then it's not too big of a deal. Uh, we're going to move all the way to the other side now to uh, prepare for the next ad cast. This is the Greater Firestorm. I'm going to throw up Reflect for this and dodge way out of the way because I don't want to hit the tree that was walking in behind there. Uh, if I did have Parry up, I would have thrown it right there because that one can get kind of sketch, but I had to use it a little bit earlier before the intermission phase. Uh, we're going to go ahead and get on the two Colossi now. I do, unfortunately, get the Shadow Cage, but we get broke out pretty quick, so it's not too much of a loss in uptime. Uh, we're going to be burning down the burning one as fast as possible. And then as soon as that cage drops, I'm going to use my Avatar immediately there before all this is even grouped up because I want that cooldown to be cycling for the next set of ads as fast as possible. Obviously, we're going to wait for everything to group up and then throw Thunderous Roar out on all these dudes. And during the, the this portion of the fight, we're going to be saving our, our roar for each of the ad sets. Uh, if you do have good positioning right here, you can use your second or your third Fearlath cast if you can clip like the Dark Colossi and all those ads as long as they don't immediately explode. Because obviously you want to be, you know, cleaving all those as much as you can with the Fearlath. If you get bad cages or the positioning is a bit slow, 
and things die a little bit too quick or out of place, then you might have to save the, your axe cast for the next set of adds. But luckily we had a pretty decent grouping there, so I went ahead and used it on that one. Plus we get more, you know, axe cast throughout the fight doing it that way. We're going to move off the boss here just for a second to get this line out and dodging all these firestorms. And then uh, back onto these next set of Colossi. And we're once again focusing down the burning one. Get some high dot stacks there. Luckily I don't get a cage or a break this time. Using my trinket once again immediately because we really want to kill the, the burning Colossi. Uh, before the second cage set so we can skip it every time ideally I get a line here We're running out making sure that there's no green ads around a clip I'm going out to kick that one ad every time we got everything pretty grouped here So I throw out my thunderous roar and immediately hit my avatar to help buff it for the the tail end here It's not you know perfect, you know cooldown alignments But it is still gonna buff all these dots on all these ads here and help finish these off We lose a couple of seconds up time with it here waiting for the boss to come back in But it's not that big of a deal I'd rather cycle things on cooldown at this point and get as many uses as possible basically uh, So as we get to the tail end of phase two here We're just backing the boss up a hair for these lines making sure that the next set of ads coming in uh, Doesn't get clipped by any of them We do have to grip a couple of them in throw down a speed tope uh, totem to help get him to the boss just just to cover our bases and make sure everything's safe because the heart is getting fairly low at this point but from my point of view it's just dodging stuff at the moment and uh, paying attention to those ads now right here i'm trying to get the most out of my test of might window before he incarnates up into phase three i should have used my fear of lath right before he did that or is what i would generally do rather than do it at the beginning of the phase like right now so i moved off the boss so i could come back in for that free charge and then i'm going to immediately use the legendary uh, and start doing damage that way i moved back to charge for two reasons there one you know free rage two i want to save my heroic leap uh, for a little bit later here when the firestorms go out because obviously we don't want to run off the boss and just go stand there when these firestorms go out right there so I want to have the leap available to me so I can jump that to the edge of the platform in case I get it but otherwise we're nearing the end of the fight here we get down to execute phase finally we get a line just try not to move with those as much as possible dodging the swirlies and our first apocalypse roar goes out you just got to touch it and we're going to immediately walk through get to the other side pop our bloodlust window here and 10 seconds will be my second potion coming back up so we'll get it for the tail end of lust or the full 30 seconds of the pot anyway uh there are fatality triggers right there at 30 percent i didn't actually see how much damage it did but i think it was pretty good for this pull uh 51 ish stacks i want to say dodging all these lines we're just generally hanging out around the diamond marker here um i didn't get a firestorm again so i don't have to get off the boss or anything it's just stacking up juggernaut and going to town, dodging these lines, trying to stay as safe as possible, and anytime we do get a mechanic, just not moving with it. Um, moving off here, we're going to stack up for the second Apocalypse Roar in this AMZ briefly. Uh, you could have used, you know, some of the, the other movement stuff there, but I'm just going to charge the boss pretty much every time on these Apocalypse Roars just to help feed as many executes as we can during this last phase. Um, we're going to... Just try to stay up behind him here as much as we can around uh, the star marker just you know so we don't get parried or anything and this is where the raid needs to be regardless so we're not in danger of tagging anybody that's holding a seed if we can help it um i threw up my parry there i didn't actually pay attention to what what i was trying to avoid but uh we're gonna just cycle around and as we near the next apocalypse roar here, I do have cooldowns running right now, so you you see that the the legendary is off cooldown, but I'm I'm holding on to it till after my avatar window here. I'm gonna back up, or I was thinking about backing up there to get off that free charge again, uh, but I I didn't. I opted to to get to the other side as fast as possible because that was what the the raid call was. Uh, I immediately sent my legendary upon landing over there right into a fire swirl, so that almost killed me. Luckily, I had. A health potion still that I burnt instantly when it dropped there, so we got away with it. Get a fire line here, and as we near the end, the last set of tornadoes go out. Now, I know all the seeds on the far side, and the boss health percent is, like, below 1%, so I'm just going to sit there and, you know, do as many executes as possible at the very end to secure the kill. So there's our uh, cutting edge for rock. Hopefully this helps going into the faded season as well for anybody looking for a guide on the arms warrior. Thank you so much for watching if you made it this far and I will see you in the next one. Peace.